I knew that faith was important uh, to bring into your business. I wasn't aware of how many people are going through the motions in their business, leaving out that uh, super important spiritual side of who they are, mm -hmm. body, mind, and spirit, right? and really being stopped and blocked, even in business success. Mm. And so many times I don't think we uh, see that connection. And I'm seeing it more and more with my spiritual coaching clients that are coming on board and we're speaking about their businesses. And then we're speaking about their home life. We're speaking about their faith life. Mm. And I've just seen how it all intertwines. And if there's a breakdown in one area, it's, it's holding them back or stopping them in, in all these areas of their life. I'll give you an example. Um, one of my coaching clients, and this is another story, uh, he came to me in a downturn. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was working in a career, doing very well. And then all of a sudden, something shifted and he left uh, his employment and went into a downward spiral of depression. Mm. Uh, as a man, he got emasculated. He was out of work. He was relying on his wife. His wife was providing for the, the household. And he's got a woman that loves him tremendously and said, listen, just you know, find yourself, get back up. And what happens sometimes is that you fall into that vicious cycle of just downwardness and depression and not good enough and I'm not worthy. And as a weeks turned into months, it, it was about a year he was out of work. And he came to me and at looking for coaching. And he's like, I'm at rock bottom. I mm. don't know what to do. And I said, well, you need a, you know, an injection of confidence as a man, right? Yeah. Or, or a woman, doesn't matter. And so the first thing I had him do, it, I said, I want you to go out and find seven employers, potential employers. And I want you to walk in with your resume in hand, confidence, and just go for the no. Mm-hmm. Just tell him you want the job, expect a no, but just do it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes, so I don't have to get a yes. I was like, no, go for the no's, not the yeses. Right. So he, he did it and he's like, I, I set it up this way. I said, I want you to go for uh, three uh, job opportunities in the, the career that you left that you really don't wanna do, mm -hmm. but you're good at it. So it's low hanging fruit and you could definitely get income coming in. Mm -hmm. And then go for four that you actually might want to do yeah. in whatever industry. So he did that. He came back to me the next week and he said, Joseph, I went into all seven, four of them offered me a job on the spot. Wow. And I instructed him, when they offer you a job, if they do, say no. Say, I need to think about it and I'm gonna make my decision this Thursday. Mm -hmm. So put them on hold. And he's like, won't that like, you know, freak them out or I'll lose the job? I was like, no, it will actually make them respect you more that you really wanna think this through. It's an important decision for you and your family. Sure. So he did that and came back and for the, he said for the first time in his life, he actually chose a job or employment that he really wanted to do for him mm. rather than what he needed to pay the bills. Wow. And now the opportunity has opened up with that career um, where he's being offered over $100,000 his first year out. He's been handed keys to the building. He's only 15 days on the job and uh, full salary plus benefits, all this other stuff. And it was just like this amazing opportunity opened up when we just had him take one step. And, and I have to say this as well, I have to add that that's the business side, the spiritual side, he's been spending an hour a day in silent prayer, mm. listening to God every single morning and surrendering his whole situation to him. Wow. So when you put those two things together, starting his morning with God and then taking an action step in the real world, all of a sudden blessings are starting to come in and people are already showing up in his life saying, you're a completely transformed person, like what happened to you? Wow, that's awesome. So that's really how they come together. That's just one small example with one client. Yeah, that's really cool. That's that's a great formula for success, you know, putting those two things together and, and then taking action. You know, not when you when you have that depression that's that kind of creeps in your mind and we all get it from time to time. It you know, something happens, a deal falls apart, whatever it is, uh, family challenges. You you have those that a little bit of doubt that sometimes can creep in, but the the important thing is to know that this too shall pass and then take action. You know, you've always got to have the momentum and then once you take small action sometimes it's as small as just like you mentioned take your resume in go talk to them go to a networking event hand out your flyers your 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 resume to people at a networking event uh, taking action builds momentum and then the momentum is going to lead to greater success it's really well said and for all your faith-based listeners out there so many times i think we pray for an answer mm -hmm. like god help me in this situation help me out of this problem and then we don't take that action well god doesn't have an access now because you're not doing your part 
Right, so it looks like do your part and then total trust on God for the outcome or the result. Right. But you got to take that action. So for your listener right now, maybe if you're feeling stuck right where you are in whatever your situation is, that's what it looks like is get quiet with God, surrender the whole situation to him, trust him, and then look at or get coached on what are practical steps, one step that I could do right now that you could do right now in your situation so that God can open up the doors, open up the opportunities for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, great recipe for success there. So more from Joseph coming up in the show. We're going to talk about his podcast as well, Broken Catholic Podcast, and also uh, Spiritual Coaching Business. And he has the first 100K podcast as well. And also coming up, your girl, Paulina, in the house. We're going to talk networking. We're going to talk uh, catering. Okay, we're back here in studio helping you win uh, in studio today. Joseph Warren in the house and uh, your girl, Paulina, as well here in studio with us. I want to go back to Joseph Warren now. So we're talking you know, a little bit about your spiritual coaching business today. You also have your podcast. What's going on with the podcast? So I have two podcasts. I have the business podcast, Your First 100K. And the reason why I do that show, I invite successful entrepreneurs uh, to speak about how they made their first $100,000 because I believe this is where 90% of entrepreneurs get stuck yep. and they don't know how to get through and they're pretending like they're winning, but yep. they're going home broken alone. Mm. So I get real about what's real and we have those conversations. What was it like in your first year? Yep. What was the mental game of entrepreneurship? What were the things you were wrestling with, the voices in your head that were telling you you weren't good enough, you'll never make it, it's not gonna work, et cetera. And we talk about those things. And I wanted to share what one of my listeners uh, said. He wrote, I love this podcast. I have been in business for just over a year and hit my first $100,000. Your podcast helped inspire that, Joseph. You are the man. I am a young black entrepreneur and I've never made that kind of money in my regular jobs ever. Thanks, brother. Sweet. That's why I do this show. That's a raving review right there, man. That's a raving review. And that's that's brand new for that individual. Like he probably had a limited belief system around how much money he could make in his life in a right. year. And he right. just broke through that. He broke through his own mental game of entrepreneurship. That's what we talk about on that show, and that's why I do it. And we have listeners in over 85 countries and growing right now, which is amazing to me, and I'm humbled by that. That's super cool, man. And I get to speak to all those people. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, because I think a lot of times it's the, you know, someone that grew up that way, they're, they're used to that W-2 type job, mm -hmm. going into a job, nine to five, going home, turning it off, and then to start your own business or take the risk of starting your own business and, and then reaching your first 100K, that's something special. I love it. And as I alluded to earlier in the show, that's the gentleman that reached out to me yesterday and said, I need to be mentored by you. Is mm -hmm. there any chance you can mentor me? And I said, well, I have a 12 week spiritual coaching program if you're interested. So I turned it from a business conversation to a spiritual conversation. Yeah. And right there he's like, actually, yeah, I love that you put faith into the business. I think yep. that's fantastic. So we got on and we had a clarity call today and he signed up and we got very clear on this one thing that's blocking him in one of his relationships and he's holding on to unforgiveness mm. and he doesn't know how to get past it. So he's drinking the poison every day and mm. he's the one that's hurting himself. Wow. And he goes, I know this is holding me back in my business. So it's holding him back. 100%, how could it not be? Mm -hmm. He's not showing up whole and complete mm. in any area of his life because he's bringing that same person into every area. Right. So why is it important to get clear on that? I think if he doesn't, um, one, it stifles creativity. Like, so just from a business conversation only, I see this with a lot of clients, they don't know what to do next. They right. feel stopped in their business. And I'm like, well, how did you get to this level? You had all these creative ideas, why did it stop? Right. And then we get down to, there's a spiritual issue going on. Mm. As soon as we eradicate that, all their creativity comes back because it's almost like their conscience was off mm. and holding them back from winning. It makes a lot of sense. They can't win because they know there's something off, there's something wrong, and sometimes it's subconsciously, they don't know how to access, access it themselves or discover what it is. It's a complete blind spot. That's why having a coach um, really helps them to 
get past that, get through that, and really move forward in their life and their business. Yeah, I like that. We're talking with Joseph Warren here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. I'm your host, Brandon Rimes. First 100K podcast. He also has Spiritual Coaching Business and the Broken Catholic podcast as well. What's going on with that podcast? Broken Catholic, I love that. Um, That's where I get to go like deep spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. And I bring on uh, Protestants, I bring on Catholics, and we talk about what's God doing in your life. Mm Mm-hmm. And yes, business sometimes comes into that conversation 100% because we integrate, right? Our work and our personal life, our spiritual. And uh, it's, it's, I had a client, I I forgot how long it was since you and I were on, but I had it. Did I tell you the witch story? I don't recall offhand. I don't think so. So I had a a referral from a Hollywood producer um, referred to uh, a Hollywood producer was referred to me to be on my be a guest on my show. So I was like, okay, why not? That just opens me up to a Hollywood audience. So she comes on the show. I had never met her, and within five minutes of us recording, yep. she goes, "I think I should put this out there. I'm a witch." Wow. And immediately, Brandon, I'm like, I'm not sure what to do with this right now. Wow. Right, and I have this my own little mental game go on. I'm like, should I stop the 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 show? Should I? What should I do? And then I was like, I just set up a sent up a prayer and I said, God, show up in this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I just went with it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. How'd you get into that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what made you want to start practicing witchcraft? Yeah. So we just, she got disarmed because I just accepted kind of where she was. I didn't make her wrong. Right. I didn't judge her or anything. I was just like, oh, that's curious. Da, da, da. And the conversation opened up and I was like, listen, bottom line is this, whatever you practice or you're into right now in your life, uh, you're God's precious daughter. Nothing changes that. You're loved by him wherever you are. And he wants to speak with you and share your, his purpose with you. And she goes, funny, you should mention fathers. You know, because I was like, he's your father, your heavenly father. And she's yeah. like, funny you should mention father. I was like, I was like, why is that? She's like, well, when I was a young girl, my dad left us. Yep. He abandoned us. Mm. And I was like, tell me more. Mm-hmm. And she opened up and then started crying on my show. Yeah. By the end of it, we were laughing. We were best friends. And God's love and forgiveness and everything was just an acceptance was just right there in that conversation. And she goes, you know, this is so amazing. She's like, I had no idea what to expect, but here I am speaking with a broken Catholic, and I'm a witch, and the broken Catholic made the witch cry. She's like, there's got to be a show or a movie around that. You yeah, know? yeah. And I was like, well, that's interesting. And So she held on to the witch idea. Like she's so, She sees herself as a witch. She's told herself that many times that that's what she is, so that's how she defines herself. I think a lot of that was in there. Brandon, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you're right. And I think that's what happens when we're missing our true identity, mm-hmm. a son or daughter of our creator. Right. We search for God in all the wrong places. Yes. And sometimes we get into a lot of yeah. mess. Yep. Um, she ended up clearing up by the end of the show, by the end of that episode. Well, Joseph, I'm not I'm not like the dark witch or evil or anything. It's, it's mm. more like the good witch, the white witch. And I was like, okay, got it. So she's like, I, I still believe in God. I just do like the witchcraft stuff because it that kind of works for me. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's interesting, right? Wow. But bottom line, the main message was I was able to meet her right where she was, mm-hmm. just accept, not agree with mm-hmm. her practices, but accept. And right there, God entered the conversation and there was healing and it was openness. And to me, that's beautiful to have those kinds of conversations without judgment. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I left truth at the door. I brought truth into the conversation, but not right. in a condemning way Right. that repels people. Because I think that's what causes all the divisiveness in the world. Right, it really does. So how did how did you feel or, or notice God's presence in the conversation? Well, one, she started weeping. Yeah. Like at first, she started like chest puffed out, like okay. I'm a witch. What yeah. you, you got something to say? Like, yeah, yeah. Like kind of challenge me. Uh huh. And I didn't. And she got softer, and there was no defense at that point. And then right. she got real. Right. And I saw her heart open yeah. up. And that was just a shield she puts up because yes. it polarizes people. And she even said, she's like, you know, when I said that at five minutes in, I had no idea why I said I'm a witch. Mm. Like I wasn't even thinking that or anything. It just blurted out of my mouth. Wow. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Wow. Interesting. So I think people are searching and they're hungry. Right. Someone notice me. Yes. Someone see me. Oh, yeah. And when you look at them and you see them, not the versade of them and all the fake social mm-hmm. stuff. And you just look at them, 
it opens up everything. Well, there's been studies done on the number one word that said out of all the conversations we have, the number one word that said is I. Yes. Whenever you're having conversations, it's I, 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 me, me, me. You know, so that's that's uh, interesting that you say that. So, hey, good stuff right there. Check out Joseph Warren's podcast, Broken Catholic, and also... I have three top tips. Uh, the first thing is spend one hour a day in silence and quiet with God. Uh, number two, surrender whatever you're struggling with to him. Just surrender it. All outcomes, the future, everything. You can't control it anyway. You've been trying and it's not working, right? So... Might as well surrender it. And then number three, take one tiny action in the direction of what you want in your life. That will give God the act, uh, the access to open up new doors for you. And then number four, if you're interested, uh, you could get my uh, free book, uh, free Kindle book um, called Broken Christian, How a Self-Centered Bad Boy Became a God-Centered Businessman, if that interests you in any way, and it's spiritual and business, faith and business. Uh, you could get that at josephwarren.net forward slash possibilities. That's josephwarren.net forward slash possibilities. Yeah, I like that. Now, so when you say surrender, how, how do you do that? What do you mean by that for some of our listeners or viewers out there? Great question. I love that you asked that. So it looks like uh, specific words. Um, if you God shows you something that needs to be removed from your life, maybe it's an addiction or something like that, like alcohol or drugs or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the specific prayer is, Father, uh, I give you permission to remove this addiction from my life mm. and use force if necessary. Say that prayer every morning for 10 days and God will come in and transform your life. But And here's the second part. You have to believe that he actually will. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have the belief system behind it. I like that.